group. Welcome back. Uh, welcome to today's video. So in our last uh, in our last few videos, we're kind of working through a series on how to price uh, how to price options, and we've just looked at American options and uh, and how they're priced differently to European options when we use a binomial tree approach. And so in today's video, we're just going to talk a little bit about the difference between American and European options and when it's optimal to early exercise an American option, because I know a lot of students are often confused by this. So let's think a little bit about it. Uh, the difference between an American option and a European option is that with an American option, you can early exercise that. By that, I mean you can you can use your right but not obligation to buy the underlying of whatever the strike price is, right? So the question is when should you do that? We'll say, for example, if you bought a, an option with a strike price of 100 and um, when the underlying was trading at 100, and it goes up a little bit, it goes to $100 and 10 cents, you know, should you then exercise it and get your 10 cents of value or what should you do? Well, the answer usually is no. It's very rare that it's actually optimal to early exercise an option. And the reason for that is just that the option, we, we learned earlier on that an option is made up of a combination of time value and, uh, and intrinsic value, right? And so once it's moved into the money, once it has some intrinsic value like that, um, if you exercise the option, you obviously get the intrinsic value. You get to buy the underlying at the strike price and sell it at whatever the going price is in the market right now. But in the real world, what will happen is that that option will be worth, it'll be worth more than the intrinsic value because of time value, right? So if you could exercise it and get a dollar of value, the truth is you could probably sell it to someone else and maybe get a dollar and 25 cents for it. So you'd never early, even if you wanted out, if you felt it had moved enough, it was not gonna move anymore, it was in your favor, you'd rather sell it at the market price, we'll say of a dollar 25, rather than exercise it and get one dollar, okay? And so it's very rare that it makes sense to early exercise an American option, either puts or calls, okay? Now, there are scenarios in which it is optimal to early exercise. So for puts, when the present value of the intrinsic value is greater than the remaining option value of holding to maturity, uh, you can early exercise them. So what does that mean? What it really means is that when the amount of money that you would receive, the intrinsic value that you'd receive if you exercise that option, can then be invested at the risk-free rate and earn you more money than you would get by selling the option and getting the time value for it, then you would, you would early exercise that option. And so that really only happens with put options when they're very deep in the money and when interest rates are high. And so essentially it makes sense to early exercise them in order to get that money and invest it in a bond until the maturity date rather than selling it for an amount that is more than the intrinsic value but less than the intrinsic value plus what you would earn in interest. Hopefully that makes sense. So, and as you can see, that's not something that's going to happen all the time. And so that's for puts. That's when you'd early exercise a put option. What about call options? Well, call options, there's actually only really one scenario in which you'd early exercise that. That's when they're deep in the money and a large dividend is ex expected before the maturity date, okay? Now, why is that? Why does the dividend matter? Well, the, the price of an underlying will always fall by the amount of the dividend paid. And, and that, that just has to happen. That makes sense. Because if a stock um, is paying a dividend, we'll say the stock is trading at $100 right now and it's going to pay a $1 dividend, you would expect the, the overall package of stock plus dividend now to be worth the same once the dividend has been paid to you as it was worth before the dividend was paid to you, right? So if it was worth 100 before it paid a dividend, after you've received the dividend, you'd have a $1 dividend and you'd expect the stock to be worth 99 cents. Now, options owners don't receive the dividends, right? Just stockholders receive the dividend. So um, the, the, you don't benefit from receiving the dividend, but you do 
uh, get harmed by the fall in the price of the underlying. So for a call that's deep in the money and really quite a large dividend has to be about to be paid, it becomes optimal to early exercise. And the correct point to early exercise is not a week or a month or whenever you feel like it before the dividend. It's actually right before the dividend is paid. And once again, um, if you didn't do so, you should just, you know, if you wanted to get out a week before the dividend is paid, it'll always be optimal to sell it to someone else and let them do the sensible thing. Uh, but you would never early exercise it uh, other than in this scenario. And when you do early exercise it, it'll be right before the dividend is paid. Hopefully this is helpful. Um, if you want to learn more about this stuff, uh, you can learn about it in my book, Trading and Pricing Financial Derivatives, and there is a link to that in the description below. Have a great day, and uh, don't forget to subscribe and like the videos. Thanks. Bye.